Your three-year-old will soon be four, and the transition to four represents a whole nother level of depth of thinking for your child. So we focus this kit on pre-literacy skills, including handwriting prep, math skills, understanding sequencing and patterns, independence and building on the Montessori principles of helping your child really feel empowered, and then sensory learning. So I wanna start by showing you these measuring cups. They are so fun. So this is a visual representation of fractions for your child. So they can really understand intuitively the difference between a half and a whole and a quarter and a third. They nest and they give your child their own sense of independence and empowerment in the kitchen. So we also included visual recipe cards. So there's three different recipes that your child can make. They go from a little bit more simple that they can do all on their own, building a fruit parfait, to baking, to a little bit more gr delayed gratification and making granola bars or having your help um, making pancakes. So let me just show you how these open up. So the granola bars, for example, your child will have the ability to read the recipe. So they're really reading left to right visually, um, top to down, top to bottom. And they're able to understand what ingredients they need because there's visual cues. They have their measuring cups so they can match what they need. I need a whole cup of oats, for example. They can mix, there's, there's steps that they're taking and really is the sequencing that is the building blocks of understanding math. So this is really fun. Accompanying this, is a book called Quarter, Half, and Whole. We took all of the research on core, common core curriculum for kindergarten and brought in those words into this book. So there's words like um, how many, some, few, whole, half. And we've popped out these words in the book so that you can really focus on these, um, these emphasize these words as you're reading it to your child. Last, first, all of these kind of math words are starting to integrate for your child um, in a very natural way when they're baking with you. Also built on the color learning in the liquid color lab with this color hue puzzle. This is a complicated puzzle. It's not like a jigsaw puzzle where you pit fit the pieces in based on spatial relationships. This is really about noticing color hues and the subtle differences in color and what should go next to each other. So if I spin this, you'll see when you take out the pieces that your child needs to learn to match and place colors based on very subtle differences in hues. So this paler yellow kind of it that integrates a little bit more green needs to go next to the pale yellow that integrates more green. We did lots of play studies with this puzzle and discovered that children really started to deepen their understanding of hues and color theory um, when after playing with this. So this will be fun for you too. This is a really fun puzzle. We also incorporated sequence learning with our boat set. So the boat set has cards that your child will match. So they're gonna translate this two-dimensional image into the three-dimensional world by building these boats. So here's a two-dimensional card, and I have to notice that the blue, the person in blue is um, on this side, then in the middle is a person in red, and then next is the person in yellow. And then I need to build the boat accordingly your child will have a real deep desire for completion. We noticed that you know, even the orientation of the sails can be a challenge. So at first they, they probably will just place the right sail, the correct color sail into the correct boat, but later they're gonna start to notice the nuances of orientation of these sails. And these are just really also really fun for pretend play and open-ended play. Then we have the Montessori sensory box. So a lot of sensory learning happens through all of our senses, but if you eliminate the sense of sight, your child will have a much deeper, richer understanding of touch um, than they do when they're able to see as well. So we put these little pieces into the sensory box and your child will have to feel and touch and make the match themselves. So there's two slots for your child's hands here, and there's also a larger slot so you can play with them. This is great for their language, building language too. So one of the things that we 
love to encourage is for you to allow your child to find something in the house, not something you know living or too sticky, but find something in the home to hide for you, to then put your hand in and you describe what you're feeling for them. And they start to get that rich descriptive language and they're understanding what are, what are, what is mom talking about? What is my parent talking about here? And then um, they know, they love knowing something that you don't. And so you, you're continuing to describe it. It's, it's long, it's smooth, it's got some pokey things. At the end, I think that there are four pokey things. Ah, it's a fork. So this is a really fun um, way to, to just engage with your child, build their language skills, and have them tune into their sensory learning. Handwriting prep starts in uh, pre-K around four. And so one of the things that you can do as a kind of a sneaky way to prepare their hands, their strength and their dexterity for writing is to practice sewing. Children love to sew. They also love to sew with a real feeling needle. So this has a blunt end because we've already perforated the holes here, but your child will feel so grown up sewing with their, their their needle. It also has a large eye and with focus and persistence, your child will be able to actually thread this needle. So you can reuse these pictures and you can make, um, your child can make different patterns. They can learn to sew. Um, this is such a great sewing kit. And then you can, you know, cut the thread or unsew, undo it and redo it over, over again. Um, so it's really a way for them to have that independence and that first experience with sewing. We always include a play guide, and I really encourage you to read this guide. This time is so valuable. We've taken a lot of uh, intention into helping you make the most of the end of three and that transition to four. It's a big transition. We noticed that a lot of children have a lot of kind of spikes of interest at this age. They have a wide range of, of abilities in terms of a particular you know, interest or skill. Um, and so really tuning into where your child is at and helping them progress in a way that's healthy for them is all where it's at at this age. So enjoy, this is the last few months of three and it's such a sweet age.